Hello everyone, welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Today coming at you from a Sweden with Burian Flax. I'm not in Sweden. Hey, hey! He is. I'm uh, crippled. I um, I got a trapped nerve in my neck and it really hurts. Oh no. Oh. You've got to go to the doctor straight after this, have you? Yes. Been? Old people chat. Uh, this is what happens now to us. We don't understand technology. Burian's got a crappy microphone. I need some horse tranks or something. I, I can't sleep. It's insane. It's so painful. Like everything is, pain- is painful. Everything. Did, how did this happen? Did you lift something heavy? No, I uh, woke up one morning after sex? I slept funny. I woke up one morning and I had a, you know, like a little crick in my neck, as you do every once in a while. And uh, it just progressively got worse and worse and worse. And over time, it has evolved as well. At first, it just really hurt to sit, like sit upright in a chair or like drive a car or whatever. It felt like on my left side, it felt like under my armpit and like the side of my torso was like not able to to stretch. Like it was like really tight, you know, like it felt oh like God. every time I sat down, like it felt like it was going to like rip. It was really, really quite painful. But um, so it meant like if I sat at my computer to stream or, or play games <laughs> or whatever, that also hurt. But yeah. I was able to sleep, no problem. Like I could sleep on my back, on my side and it was fine. So I got some relief. Um, God, I've it. just uh, I've just uh, sat, stood up straight and I've like flexed my neck oh, yeah. and my back. I'm I like know. really paranoid now that yeah, yeah. And then for the past for the past week, it's been bearable sitting at a at a at a desk in a chair. Um, it hasn't been so bad driving and stuff, but um, I cannot sleep. I can't sleep on my side. I say like the minute I roll over on my side, I can feel my neck and my shoulder like the muscles just start to like spasm and then they just it just intensifies this is over the course of like a minute to the point where i just have to sit up like it feels like i'm being stabbed it's unbelievable oh my god fuck it's what's so the I can't treatment sleep. well i don't know if they uh, do want them to cut it off or fucking they I don't have know, to just, they have to kill him just That's it. just fucking <laughs> take right. me out back and old yeller my ass or something i don't know i'm done <laughs> like it's just too painful you must have Googled it, right? You must I have, have like, yeah. Done and, uh, some and it's like, Googling. oh, these uh, instant relief. Do these stretches. Do this. <laughs> do that. Great. Yeah, thanks. None of it has worked. I've tried Jeez. every single one and not a single one of them has worked. These these videos have like millions of views. Yeah. Sorry, you're watching YouTube videos. Man, I, yeah. If, if you wake up at three in the morning, you, f- you feel like somebody's stabbing you. You can't get back to sleep. There's not much else to do except for watch, no shit. you know, YouTube videos on what possibly could be wrong with you oh god so yeah so i mean and then like you said i've got cancer and i've got <laughs> symptoms of cancer and every every known cancer now and <laughs> everything yeah. else too so that's what happens when you have anything wrong with you yeah you know, it's, uh, like the, the other day says it's cancer. the other day i was um in fact this was uh two days ago we're getting the cab home because I'm, I'm in sweden for dream league right now we're, we're driving back from the studio and the guys, the car was quite loud. And I was having a conversation with the guys in the back of the cab. I had to turn around and turn my neck to talk to them. Yeah. And I had my neck turned for about 30 seconds to have a little conversation. And when I go to turn back, the muscles in my neck are like, yeah. oh, you tried to use us. Ah. Yeah, yeah. And I had to like stretch my neck and my shoulders out. I'm just so fragile now. Any kind, like I sleep on the wrong pillow. Or I don't move yeah. too enough, or I move too much when I'm asleep. I wake up. It's like, Ugh! well, I it's think uh, I had uh, I had like quite a flimsy pillow because mm. I made the mistake of we went to get new pillows, and I could have got like a firm pillow, but then they had a not so firm pillow, but it was like a cool pillow, you know, mm. like like a chillo, like a you know. <laughs> One of those ones that's cold. It's like cold, you know, like. How does it stay cold? I don't know. But what? it turns out it's not a very supportive pillow. And I think mm. that's uh, that's the root of the problem, unfortunately. I see. I've, I've changed I... pillows since. But I've it's never too late heard of now. chillos. Never, never heard, heard of a chillo? Never heard of a chillo. How does it start? I don't understand. Does it, does it have, is it electric? Does it I think stay the ones with- in the 90s you had to put in the freezer, or there was like a part of the pillow you put into the freezer for a mm, bit. Like a cold pack. Kinda, yeah, but I think now they've got some crazy space age material that just can stay cool for a bit huh. longer than normal material or something. Gosh, I don't know, yeah. but it 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 does it is does actually stay cool. Like when you lay down, it it does feel quite cold. It's nice. I believe it. Like colder than a normal pillow, but oh my god, it has I, also I crippled what, me. So I, I, I felt like <laughs> the oldest man at the weekend. I went to this Bristol Simple Things Festival. Okay, it's basically kind of 
kind of like a inner city festival where they've got like three theater venues and some like SWX where we we went and saw Ghostface Killer Sips. Oh yeah. Um that that venue and yeah. then there's a bunch of other little tiny venues as well uh like like the bowling alley and stuff where The they place were, where and, we and saw the, Ghostface was pretty nice actually. Yeah, it's, it's a there, nice it's venue. A, it's, some of them were pretty big venues yeah. and they had about 50 or 60 Bristol based or local acts. Some of them, I guess, had come down from further um, on, and they were all. I'd never heard of any of them, of course, because I think modern music. There's so much, so many, so uh, it's so wild, and and you, you know, and I didn't. I gotta say, I didn't like any of them. No. And I must have watched like twenty <laughs> bands, and I, 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 I didn't like any of them. I'm sorry. I, I even like made like a little challenge for myself where I was like, gonna spend twenty minutes at each place, right? You know, right. Um, just to give it a chance. Yeah. You know? Um, but I found myself leaving, like waiting for that twenty-minute mark so often, and I don't th- like some of the experiences were hard because they were packed full of people, and you're mm. like shoulder to shoulder with people. Other other places are like you can't even get in the door, kind of thing, and you're yeah. like in a queue for an hour. And, you know, other places there's like just lots of people making like it, it wasn't like mosh pits and like lots of people mm. being like physically like active and stuff i mean it's obviously always like that a gig that someone will shove past you and you'll get an elbow in the in the ribs occasionally like it's kind of inevitable. are you saying that you felt old at this gig is that well what i felt old partly because i felt like i didn't like any of the music no and i felt like i felt like my dad saying i don't understand new music i don't get new what music. what kind you, of music uh... was it lulu was it dance music was it was it indie music was it was it like pop music what what kind of music was it okay so the the first act i saw was like um one one woman DJ mm. playing like electronic music, like yeah. kind of trancey music, but not with without any without any like kind of actual melody. Like if it was like nineties trance, like Ibiza trance, like mm. I'm sure I would have yeah. actually liked it. But but no, the most the main reason she was there was she had this incredibly fancy light show going on, okay. and it was like a firework display. But like like if I had epilepsy, I would have lasted like fifteen seconds in there. Gosh, do you know what I mean it was that bad? I was like. And uh, this was at 1 p.m. I was watching this. You know what I mean? It was like, I'm not ready for like no, yeah. <laughs> this epilepsy inducing blinding light show some of these, in like a um, theater at 1 p.m. Yeah. Some of these bands, I think, like when you when you think back to bands um, in like the say, like the 80s or, or the 90s or whatever, there were scenes around the music. And I'm sure there still are scenes around the music. But I feel like if you're older, it's harder to potentially get into those scenes, you know, because they're usually um younger people are are part of them right like it's it's it it's almost like part of their every day you know like um like like say you live in california in the 80s and uh you're part of like the the punk rock scene mm, back, yeah. back then it's it's kind of like your life right you 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 go to parties with all the same people and all the same bands play and it's very intimate, right? Like these these aren't yeah. big stadium filling bands at this point. These are like also, party bands that play for twenty people and the same twenty people over and over and over, and they're all drinking buddies as well. And they also deal drugs to each other and uh, um and whatnot. I see that's and, and, part and, of that. You know that what scene. I mean? It's it yeah. is a, it's a big scene, and I think. I it's think, not really about the music. Th- yeah, it's about, I like, think for some people it is just the music. Culture. You know, like some people... For some people it definitely is. And a, a, yeah. a lot of these bands had a big following, had a lot of people there, yeah. and were clearly very good yeah. at what they did. But I wasn't... Like like wine, I'm not a wine expert. I'm also not a whatever their type of music is expert. No. As a result, <laughs> like, yeah. I have no fucking idea can, what the hell going on. Can you, can you on. name any of the bands? I don't really want to because no, it's kind of mean. Well, okay, I saw this band. It was like a, a obviously really talented drummer, really talented guitarist, and their singer. It just felt it was like either their boyfriend, you know, or their girlfriend or whatever, which was just terrible. And what, it was like, what were they it's, called? It's, I can't, I don't want to say. Why? <laughs> because it's, I don't want to get letters. They were or, called or Radiohead, they okay? Like he, does, he doesn't want to say, <laughs> but right. they were called Radiohead. A little can, band called Radiohead. Well, well, Actually, I don't back. remember. I'm going to have right, to look can, it up. Can you, can you tell us and we'll beep it? And that way at least we have some idea. Okay, it was called. All right, hold on. That's a pretty cool name, actually. 
It is a pretty cool day. Yeah. This band only has about 250 monthly listeners on Spotify. So what you've yeah, done is... a small is, band. Yeah, so you'll, you've listened to a very small and unpopular band, and they're not very good. Have you never been there before? Like, where you've been to a gig and it's like the support act or whatever, and it's just like, these guys aren't very good. Like, that's just, that's, no, that's nothing new. You're, that's you're, just... you're seeing this band, okay, at a point in their career, if you like, as a band, where... Um, it, it could go either way, right? Like they, they're probably just starting out or, right. or maybe, you know, they've been doing it for a, a little while, but they just haven't gotten any, any real traction, if you like, or whatever. But I mean, there's, there's tons of huge bands now that started like that, right? Mm. That would play, play gigs, empty gigs, you know? Of course. You know, there's bands now that can fill stadiums where the, their first gigs were like, they had no money. They turned up to places and just hoped that they could even get a gig and yeah. would play to nobody. Or they paid to, played to 10 people who would all leave the minute they started playing, basically. Yeah, because like stand-up comedians stand do that as well, don't they? Where they start yeah. off and they're, they're like playing yeah, yeah. in a, a gas station restaurant yeah. is their first but, gig. I mean, like they might have 250 you, yeah. monthly listens now, but who knows, maybe in a couple well, of it's years. Like, it's like Malcolm Gladwell says, you have to do 10,000 hours or whatever. Yeah. That's what the Beatles did before they got famous, you know, and I'm sure they were terrible if you saw them yeah. when they played their first gig. Um, but no, I mean, I, I'm not, it's not like I... It's just I felt like I was. I just felt like I didn't understand. Mm, yeah, no, no it's fair enough. It it is there. It, there is an age component to it as well, for sure. There is definitely. I, I think again, it, like, and also everyone, all these music acts are trying to be original, right? They're trying to create something their own, right? Yeah. And they can't just be a rip off of someone else or copy someone else's style. And so as a result, they're kind of experimenting with something a bit modern and new. And some elements of modern music, I I'm not a fan of. Mm. Um, what, like? I'm old. There's this thing that like. Uh, like well a lot of the kind of just the, some of the noise I get it that's what it sounds like my dad just how noisy it is yeah well, noise. it's just Fair so enough. noisy <laughs> I mean my, my son really likes this um, DJ that I think there's a character of the DJ in Fortnite but he doesn't actually like he he likes the, the idea that this DJ has a character in Fortnite mm. oh, I okay. don't think he's ever heard any of the music or whatever but he's like oh yeah he's my favorite DJ and stuff you know but That's and fun. like most of the music in Fortnite just drives me nuts like I have to yeah. turn the music off the menu music and everything it, it, you know like it's it's like uh the the one that's on now is like some anime music or something and it just God. It's just such an assault on my on my ears. <laughs> I just don't like it. I do, it's not well, for me. Like I get well, that people love it same. and that's great, but it's not for me. And mm. I, I will never understand how anybody could could enjoy it. Like including my son, if he does even enjoy it, I don't know. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. My, it is my an eldest, old man thing uh, for sure. My eldest listens to uh, music. I don't know what style it is. I've been trying to figure it out. Uh, it's all over Spotify and generally the band, someone will know, someone someone will, in the comments will know. Um, she listens to music where I would say most of the sort of avatars for the bands are like cartoon characters yeah. or anime characters. It's incredibly fast, like very high BPM yeah. and it's just like intense. It almost sounds like you're playing three tracks at once. It's like gorillas, but like sped up. No, no, it's it's way way more in, intense than than that. Like it's, it's no, but just, like the idea of like the little avatars, the animate the animated people, and, and I stuff. guess yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like it's just is it like caramel dancing type stuff? No, like really, like I, I don't it's know. It's like well, video game fair, music. I don't know what that is. It, it, yes, like meme like music. Very fast meme slash video game music. Yeah, it's it's something core. It's called. And she listens to a lot of that as well as some good stuff. But this is what she Everything listens to. Has, just the, switch the, off. Okay. So this one band I saw was like a mix. So it had a um, a guy like doing grime kind of rap over the top of it. Right. It was, also had like a guy on keyboard doing pan pipes. Okay. And nice. A girl on a girl on saxophone. Nice. And a guy. And so it was like he he described it as like grunge grime soul. Right. Okay. Right. And I was I was like this is this is this is weird, <laughs> but but also kind of good. This is like mixing vodka and milk together. <laughs> Jeremy, you that's the kind of Boo. that's the kind of shit. No, <laughs> Get no, off one, the no one ever Fuck did a single you. boo. But then like also very very few people like cheered or anything mm. um, either. That's always a good sign, I think. If you're one a of fan. the lyrics, I think was um, "Wagwan," right? Oh, Wagwan, yeah. Wagwan, whatever. Which means I don't know what it means. What's going um, on? 
but he, he that was kind of very common. Now, of course, the the person next to me, who was who I didn't know, um, was singing along quite loud. But he wasn't singing Wagwan because he didn't know that that was he didn't know that that was even a <laughs> word. Right. So he's like older than me, more out of touch than me, Seriously? and he's like he was really enjoying it. But I was like, does he not understand? I didn't want to tell him. Excuse I mean? me, mate, you're you're ruining my enjoyment of this. It's um, not wh- whatever you're saying. It's Wagwan. <laughs> it's it's Wagwan. <laughs> Hey, have I ever That's told you guys about Wesley Willis before? The whitest thing I've ever done. Oh my god! Have I ever crap. told you about Wesley Willis before? Wesley Who, Willis. Wesley Wesley Willis. Uh, Flax, maybe you maybe you've heard of him. I don't know. Maybe Do you Lewis is not. Wincy Willis. Wincy Willis, the weather presenter. No, Wesley Willis. Wesley Lawrence Wesley Willis. Snipes, no, the actor from Blade. Okay, listen. I'll read. Uh, I'll read a little synopsis for you and see if it jogs your memory. Okay. Okay. As an American musician and visual artist diagnosed with schizophrenia in 1989, Willis began a career as an underground singer-songwriter in the outsider music tradition. Willis's songs are typically partially spoken in an MC style and partially sung in a nasal and out-of-tune manner, reminiscent of punk rock vocals. They feature bizarre, humorous, and sometimes obscene and uh, or absurd lyrics. Sung okay. over backing created by using the auto accompaniment feature of his Technics KN keyboard. His songs cover a wide variety of topics, with mental illness and consumerism being the most prominent themes. He's okay. best known for songs like Rock and Roll McDonald's and I Whooped That Man's Ass. Amazing. I saw I saw him live in Ottawa. Me and my friends went to see him. Um he 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 gained a large uh, cult following in the 90s, which is true. Uh, because we were able to listen to his music uh, and download it from Napster. <laughs> when, yes. This is kind of like the start of the, the internet, really. Uh, well, so for I, us I do it remember it. It was kind of meme It was music. a bit meme at the time, yeah. yeah. But, but we, I mean, we didn't really have memes the way we do now back then. Um, I mean, obviously, we all come from something awful, and there were definitely sort of in-jokes. They were like the proto-memes where people would reference certain things and. And I guess that, you know, Photoshop Friday always had certain consistent jokes yeah. in that, that were like the early version of what we now understand as memes. Like, for example, now you can just have on TikTok uh, a, sim- a single image of a cat or a dog just gently nodding its head, put some text over it and a particular song, and that's the meme. Yeah. Um, so it's like, the, it's just a format for a joke, um, like a knock-knock joke. Like it's, it's a, but it, rather than just have knock-knock jokes or Doctor Doctor, you know, um, a, there's a steering wheel in my pants and it's driving me nuts. Like that's yeah. The Doctor Doctor is the the very early version of a meme. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Wesley Willis and that Rock and Roll McDonald's. I definitely recognize that. You'd see it referenced on on something awful. It was uh, it it that that's probably the weirdest uh, live act I've ever seen in my life. Um, you saw him live. Yes, I did. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. And when we went uh, we went to see him live. I'll tell you a little story about when we went to see him live as well. Um, the the whole the bathroom of the venue, the men's bathroom of the venue, was basically cordoned off. And mm. um, we got there and we got a couple of beers and we were having a fun time. <laughs> Went to go to the bathroom and couldn't get in. We're like, what? Is there like a lineup? What's going on with the bathroom? We were talking to like uh, some guy and he's like, no, no, no. Uh, it's Wesley Willis. And we're like, what do you mean? He's like, he does this everywhere he goes. Like before he goes on stage, he takes a huge dump and basically <laughs> clogs up like all the pipes in the bathroom. Oh my God. Oh my and God. it just renders the whole thing unusable or it's like a, like a disaster <laughs> okay. zone in there. Good God. And uh, apparently, this this that was one one of his one of his things. I don't know if he so, did it intentionally. <laughs> I, I guess he some, probably didn't that do is it some intentionally. Kind of power move. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it he is didn't a give power a shit. move. Yeah. So you know the the weirdest band I ever saw. My friend and I were really into a band called The Fall. Right. Um, this was sort of in the 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 nineties and the the early noughties. Marky Smith was the front man. They're kind of uh, kind of a legendary UK band. John Peel was a big fan of, of them, and. Um, and we loved them because Marky e. Smith was a very unusual front man. Um, couldn't sing, uh, looked like a, an alcoholic that would be on a park bench, um, but they were great. I mean, they, they were a really, really great band. Anyway, uh, he went through members of that band very, very often. And a lot of people would sort of do gigs or go on to have little, little, little careers with pretty much their um, sort of, uh, I guess, qualifications were, 
I was in the fall, right? So it was like, oh, this guy used to be the guitarist for the fall, and now he's got his own band. Let's go see him. But the thing is, about a thousand musicians have probably been in the fall. <laughs> Marky Smith like fires people all the time. Uh, anyway, we went to see this guy, um, and my mate was like, this guy was a guitarist for the fall. We should go see him. I was like, cool. We went there. He had a very odd set where he just sort of played non music. So one of the things he did was he had the band going. And then he came out with a drill and a violin and just ran the power drill over the violin strings, making this god awful noise. Okay. And, and he would sort of, he had this dead look on his face, like, this is music. Why aren't you all enjoying this? And sort of like, rah, 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 this unbelievable racket and this dead eyed expression. And I thought, oh, he's like almost like saying, you guys will fucking listen to anything, you consumerist scum. Like, that was, I, I assume the vibe. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> And my mate looked at me, he was like, this is fucking awful, let's leave. So we went to the pub. But it was just that, that was probably the weirdest set I'd ever been to, because it was packed and people were just standing there like with their heads cocked to the side, like, mm, yes. And some people were like, mm, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. Like it was a really weird mix. Yeah. But some people were clearly like, this is amazing. <laughs> it was terrible. It was terrible. It's I, live, I, I do enjoy live music. And I, I would even go as far as to say I enjoy live music, even if I'm not particularly into the band or. The, yeah, for sure. I, 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 like, seen, I just I mean, like to, to experience live music. I've um, seen tons of bands where I really enjoyed the live set, and then yeah, you same. Look but at there music are some and real like, damn no stinkers good. as yeah. well. Like yeah, uh, oh, yeah, you. It's often the other way around, isn't it? Like like you hear people, you hear music, and then you go and see the people live, and you're like, wow, this is not what I. Yeah, it would be definitely. Like, there know? are some bands that can't um, translate their sound to to live. I mean, so uh, Fleet Foxes are one of my favorite bands, and I remember that their, their music is very sort of close harmony. It's very, very, very structured. And their early live shows didn't sound anything like uh, what they produced on, on record. And I remember being thinking, oh man, I really wanted to see them live. Subsequent years, they've obviously gotten better, but when they first started out, I don't think they could quite get the sound right. And there, But there are tons of bands where their live rendition has that energy and that rawness and it's amazing yeah and then you listen to the record and it's overproduced to fuck like just so overproduced that it sucks the soul out of it like the drums are muffled um but i, I saw one band loved them really really loved them fantastic band but when you saw them live they were so loud you couldn't hear the song like I know that sounds crazy, but the drums, the guy was like, bah, bah. Yeah. the guitar was so loud and the singer was screaming. You thought, I know this song, but I can't actually hear it over the sound of you playing the song. That's how loud it is. I don't know how to otherwise how else to explain it. Yeah. I saw I saw Andrew WK live in oh, yeah. quite a big venue, but what not it wasn't guy. a stadium. It was just yeah. yeah, it was a venue. And it was insane. Like it was so loud. I was deaf for like a month after the show. It yeah, was insane. That's, that's your eardrums being being killed. Yes. That's how, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a fun show though. Like the energy levels were just like in outer space. It was nuts. But I always wanted to see Dan Deacon. He was a. He's apparently his live shows are pretty legendary. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So Andrew WK. Very odd career because I felt like I felt like he was one of those acts that either music journalists or the record label or someone was like, this is going to be huge and treated him and pushed him as if he was going to be huge. And he just wasn't. Yeah. Like his career just kind of I mean, what what is Andrew WK up to now? I don't like I think party some, hard song. Yeah, the party was music was everywhere. in a couple of movies, I think. And that's probably probably enough to keep him. Yeah, Keep him comfortable. I'm, I'm sure he's okay. Yeah. I'm. It's just weird to me because it felt like like I was almost being told by the music industry this guy is massive. Yeah. But none of us really seemed to believe it. We were like, is he? Because I don't really like his stuff. Is like, no, why is this, this guy like, everywhere? It was weird. Yeah. It's a. It's it's a. It's a weird. Uh, it's a weird kind of. It's really really energetic rock isn't it like it's 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 fast but like almost exhaustingly it's kind of simplistic, so. I yeah. think. Yeah. It's really so, weird. Uh, you were asking where I was. Obviously, for regular listeners, I do sound different. I am in Sweden right now doing Dream League for two weeks. Jeez. I'm out here for two weeks. Um, I, haven't, I haven't done a two-week stint in some time. I've normally just been tucking a week in here and there. Yeah. But, but I committed this year to being 
busy. I want it to be you busy. You want to be year. out there. I want it to be out there. So when they offered me work, I took as much as I could. Right. So I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to Birmingham in April. Nice. For more Dota. I'm going to be there for a week. Um, and uh, there'll be more Dota coming up later this year and stuff. And uh, it's weird. I guess that the kids are old enough now that I don't feel any kind of... I know what it's like looking after them. Like, it's it's not as hard now that they're old enough. They make sure. themselves breakfast. Yeah. They make themselves lunch. They can cook dinner if you need them to. You know, I mean, my eldest is almost at the age where she'll be babysitting for other people. Yeah. So it's like, you know, we don't mind uh, leaving them alone for a little bit. And they generally go to their rooms when they come home from school. They don't want much to do with me anymore anyway. So I was like, you know what? Why not squeeze a few more drops out of my my miserable career yeah. and, and, and yeah. go to Dota events? Yeah. It's been fun. Good. It's been fun. Good. Is, is it the same old crowd? Um, same old crowd. Yeah, it same is. Same group. Yeah. Which, you know, so some, I've seen people complain about this, where they're like, why is it the same old faces? Um, and I'd say, first of all, it is an old game at this point. Yeah, I don't so, think it's attracting new players like they were hoping to at one point. I think, yeah. I think there was a big push to get new players into the game, but I think there's just other options it's, nowadays, aren't there? It's just Not so even for MOBAs, but well. I, I think there's just other way, way more games now and other games yeah. that people can get involved in. And Dota isn't, as, isn't the draw it used to be. No, it's not. I mean, also, I'm not being funny, but in the time that you're learning Dota, I don't, I don't want to get into Dota chat. No, here. no. I just want it's to talk a slog, about something though. It's, it, it is, is a labor is of love. So really, much. Isn't it? Jesus. So but much also, work. you've lost the young, the, the, new, the next generation coming through. They are entirely playing Fortnite or even CSGO. So maybe Valve don't care. And League. No, I mean League equally, you're not going to convince you're not going to convince 10 million new people to put a thousand hours into a game just to get some kind of idea of what's happening. Yeah. Like you're just not. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I feel like people who give Dota a try, it either instantly grabs you, or you think, oh, I'm just not interested in this. Yeah. Which is absolutely. It's. It's. It, I'm not even going to say it's a marmite of games. It's just. It's not like you either love it or hate it. It's just that it either grabs you and you immediately want to put the time in. Yeah. Or you just go, I can see this is incredibly dense and it's not for me. Like, that's how it feels. It's got enough in it to grab you in. But I think predominantly it, um, it grabs people in by pissing them off. Because, <laughs> no, I think it does, though. Because I think people play it and they're like, there's no way I could possibly be this bad at a game. Like, yeah. what is yeah. it about this game? And then they invest after that. They're like, yeah. okay, I'm going to figure it out. But they but don't so the, realize the that it takes like thousands of hours to get thousands, even decent yeah, yeah. at it. So the, the complaints from people were not necessarily about the same old faces in terms of the pro players, because there are actually quite a few new pro players coming through over the last few years. Yeah. The issue was the, the talent, if you like. So people like me, um, why, are the, why is it the same old people? And... I suppose to answer that, if you're putting together a production, the main focus is the games. Where people want to watch the games. The stuff in between, the analysis, the filler stuff and all that, the tying together production, you just want people who are experienced in making that a smooth transition from one game to the next. And if you're an It's org, filler. It's filler. It's filler. Yeah, yeah. If you're an organization and you're putting together the production of a show, why would you say, hey, let's get 10 brand new people in yeah. and just gamble that somehow this is going to be the same? I think well, you don't want people turning off. No, you, know, you don't think, exactly. But also, you're very familiar. You know, I, I think that's the other thing. Like people, okay. This week, I've been playing Pacific Drive. How which is it? Is Kepler's new? Uh, it's a it's a game where basically you're. I, I read this book. I read the uh, Boris and Arcades. What's it? What's, whatever their name is. Um, their book about the exclusion zone and and roadside picnic. Okay. Which 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 basically is like. The whole thing is like it's like it's stalker, the stalker, yeah. right? It's and and that's where obviously Chernobyl happened after they'd written this book. But the whole book was about what if aliens just popped by Earth and you know had a picnic and left and left again. Mm -hmm. But all of their stuff, their yogurt pots, their cigarette butts, we're like the animals that come out of the forest and they're poisonous to us, right? And they or they kill us or they're like radioactive or, or the alien right and so it inspired this this annihilation and loads of other right. media right over the years that's all been really good any pacific drive similar idea there's this peninsula with a weird anomalies alien shit it's all walled off and a little bit like scp style you you get sucked into it and you have to sort of but you've got one of your, your car is like this remnant okay it's, uh -huh. it's you got like an you, old you like a, clark griswold car that you drive it's an around old 1983 in. station wagon that's all beat up but it's kind of enchanted right it's like it's magical and you can it's, upgrade it's, it too and well the whole the whole game is like 
these remnants, people get obsessed with them. And you get obsessed with your car because that's the whole game. The whole game is upgrading your car, like polishing it, cleaning it, fixing it up, like changing the wheels, upgrading the stuff. Bring, like, and th the game is driving out into this exclusion zone, trying to dodge these weird anomalies, collecting shit and bringing it back. But it's such, an, a, such a pure game. It's like, obviously, it's, 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 it's it, what gaming has become these days. It's, it's the evolution of like, music and what about the other things we're talking about today, like, like it just, if it did, the only thing it doesn't have is the Assassin's Creed um, tower where you have to climb up yeah. and it pings the whole yeah. zone, right? Mm. It doesn't have that, but it has basically every other thing that games have, right. you know, and, and it's, and it's quite slow as a result, but it's also quite like, there's quite a lot of filler. Right. And I always find that this is quite interesting when I see games have boring, de deliberately make their game slow and boring and awkward, right? Because it, it keeps the, the, the player grounded it immerses the player but it's also comforting sometimes yeah, you know i thought like, death stranding the, did that really well i love that i yeah it's like it, it feels like they could have just if sped it up like if i might if i like i gave feedback on the game i'd be like this is too slow but i think they have to resist that sort of player feedback and make it quite slow and it's what i call like a stream a good game for streaming yeah. streamers because you can kind of just stop at any point and talk to chat and then you know get in your car and put it in gear and drive into the rain and it's i don't know like i i don't have to pay full attention while playing it but sometimes i do okay um so it has those like gripping moments where I'll you're like okay, go. i'm gonna have to pay attention now i'm gonna pause my movie i'm gonna get in and i'm gonna gonna do it and i think it's a similar i don't know like i just feel like some people it's comforting like the, the filler that you do p flex i'm sure is excellent and and and, <laughs> can, and has its moments right much like everything does you know like the apprentice has its moments but mostly people and watch it because they kind of know what to expect. It's kind of it's just, just easy it's, and comfortable. It's just, like it's like brown, yeah. like like pink noise, not brown noise. Also, like, I'll be honest with you. A lot of the people that I work with are really, really good at what they do. And when you get someone new in, sometimes uh, you realize why the people that do what they do are hired all the time. It's because they're they're very good at it. Oh um, well, you're, you're not wrong. We we have a similar thing like with with the Oxcast people. You know, when when we've been playing games together for for ten years, you know, and so. Sometimes when we, we play with someone new, even though they're amazing, they don't quite gel with our group. Yeah, yeah. And as a result, they, they're talking in the wrong places. They're like saying things that are a bit awkward or like... Um, <laughs> they're horrible racists, you know. all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, is, it is quite common to, to take to, for someone to take time to fit in with their group. But also each group has its own dynamic. What I'm saying is that in a sense, though, PFLAX, you having this set group that's that's done it together for, for, for so many years mm. is almost exclusionary to new people coming in. Like it doesn't matter how good they are, they're never they're gonna take time to fit in. Mm. Oh yeah. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. I suppose um, the, the, the the uh the thing is we're not we're not saying we don't want new people. The problem is like I guess it it's it, it's a it's a difficult one because how do you get new people without a tier two and a tier three scene? And that whole scene of sort of the secondary and tertiary events that orgs would just put on kind of died. Uh, they got rid of the, a lot of those things in the last few years for various reasons I'm not going to go into. Um, that, that whole scene kind of died off. Um, so it's hard for new people to get their faces out there. So therefore, it's hard to find these new people to hire. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when it comes to like commentary and stuff, a lot of the guys that do the casting are the, they are the best at the doing it. Yeah. That's why they get hired over and over again. So. And then you have people people come and go too. There's people, long-standing people who leave the scene for, yeah, for a sure, variety yeah. of reasons as well and stuff too. There's always new blood coming along who are, who are good, like Jenkins, you know, right, like this, yeah. who are relatively new, but also really good. And Although he has and, been uh, around for ages. Well, now, yeah. But I, I guess like, I guess what I'm saying is though that it's, it's, it's not worth taking the risk on an unknown. Right, right? yeah. He, he needs to have done something to mm -hmm. prove that people don't hate it because yeah. you don't want people just like oh my god this guy's awful or i just can't you know an oil twitch chat and everyone's just like turning off you know that's like the ultimate and it could be really bad for that person's career want, right? as well that's the problem yeah and it, and it might not be their fault it might just be that the you know they're just not experienced with yeah it um, so uh so further to, to me being in sweden first of all it's very cold here much colder than i remembered it being yeah in february well it's february yeah, yeah but i just kind of i knew it was going to be in cold sweden but it's like zero <laughs> yeah well, it's like zero cold, yeah. when the wind hits you it's it's cold um, you're lucky it's that yeah it could i know be, let's be could honest be much colder, i know I, it's still cold i came from a fairly balmy almost spring-like london landed in stockholm i was like fuck me there's like ice there's still grit in the roads yeah 
it's if, if there's a little bit of snow lingering around, I was like, Jesus. So I'm looking forward to getting back. It's going to feel like go, landing in, a, in one of those hot foreign countries when you get off the <laughs> yeah, plane. Yeah, you're going to have your Hawaiian shorts on and your camera around your neck and stuff. Uh, but the, I don't know if this is just a Stockholm thing, even if it's just a this neighborhood thing. We're in sort of the southern part of Stockholm, Hammerby. I can't pronounce it, Swedes. I'm sorry. Hammerby or whatever it's called. Um, there's tons of restaurants around here. The Swedes seem to love to eat out. They eat out a lot. They eat out quite early, and it seems to be every single night. Yeah. So we would. It, this was a Wednesday. I was trying to get a table at a restaurant. It was for about ten people. But do you think on a Wednesday that should be easy enough? Nowhere. Oh. Nowhere. Man. Couldn't get a table. They were all like, "Nope, we're booked. Nope, we're booked." So we finally found a place. We just walked in and hoped for the best. It was about seven o'clock. Place was packed. By seven thirty, it was empty. Everybody left. Wow. And we were the only ones left in I there. I guess it's a school which was night, weird. really. So. Most yeah, but so they're, they're eating out, but they eat out early. Like, I don't think they're like the rest of Europe that eats late. I guess maybe because it gets dark so quickly. Oh, is, this the aging, is this the aging population thing? No, these were young people. So like, so like, you know, the world is getting older, right? The average age of people in like Germany is like 46 Of course, or yeah, yeah. You think young people um, nowadays are a bit more cleaner living than maybe we were when we were younger? Oh, they don't drink at all. Yeah, because like I'm not. When I was out last night, there were ten of us out. I was the only one that had a beer. Actually, there were two of us. Right. The other lad, the a Welsh lad. So it was like he had one beer. I had I had a couple of beers, and but nobody else had it. They all just oh, just water for me, please. I was like, man, times are changing. Yeah. Well, they 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 got well. They work. They work. They're fair for work. They're professionals. I'm there for work. We have to, <laughs> the next day. A lot of us weren't working. You got to get greased up and for like, work. What, one beer. You're used to working on a on a few pints deep, though. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's like your natural state. Well, I, so uh, I, I've I've decided to cut back on on drinking this year. Oh. So you're like that guy on the wire who's got like a, you know, like he's got like a, a Mickey in his desk. <laughs> he's just been on the job. He's, he's retiring in like two just weeks. Let him, just let him see his time out. He's almost got his bench. <laughs> um, so I, I uh, obviously when I'm streaming, I'd normally have a few cans when I'm streaming to just kind of, you know, have a laugh and everything. And because just got into the habit of it, really. So I was like, all right, the drinking is going to have to, to I'm going to have to do less of it. Because it was just, it was just becoming a habit where I'd have a few cans quote, yeah. to relax in the evening. I was like, actually, I don't need that. Uh, and I found, so what I did was I substituted like drinking alcohol for just having tonic water, the same as I'd have for a gin and tonic, but with no gin. So just the tonic water with a bit of lime in. And that sort of, I, was, I realized that I was just drinking for the taste yeah. and just sort of habitually, because I didn't want to just drink water in the evenings. So I would just have a couple of cans. So if I just have tonic, that was, that was fine. So we got here on the Friday. I had one beer with um, a couple of the lads. Then we came back to the hotel. And then I hadn't had a drink until last night. I only had two beers. I was like, man, I'm really, if I was in Bristol right now, you know, I would have already had a, a 5 a.m. finish, a 3 a.m. finish, and probably another 5 a.m. finish. And my liver would be aching. So I was just like, you know, let, let's try and cut down on the booze. Let's see what effect it has. Uh, and I've noticed a, a couple of differences already. First of all, I didn't realize that most people can just wake up in the morning. That's, that's something. Even having a couple of beers makes me much more groggy the next day. Yeah. Just like two beers. I kind of hadn't realized that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, so you mean influenced by all these good, clean, clean living young folks yeah. who are, you know, I was like, maybe doing they're their onto exercises. Something. Yeah. Maybe they're onto something. You know something. what a lot of young folk are doing now as well, Flax? Uh, they're well, excluding meat from their diets, too. Yeah, mm. I know. So well, Pink I, Flax already does this. We talked about this. But I got, a, I got a couple of comments. and Some people on my Discord were asking about that, that egg thing. How, how much you love eggs. No, so like, I don't want to get into it again, because obviously we did it last week. Um, I, I've said this so many times. I have no problem with vegans. Lewis is a vegan. He's one of my best friends. I, when we go down to Bristol or whatever, I will go out to eat with people and they're all vegans and I'm not like preaching at them and shouting at them and stuff like that. I, I just require two things, occasionally That's just common decency, be yeah. facts. That's not, you don't need to have a right, fucking... Right, <laughs> but, but the, the idea is that that's not what I'm doing. Right, like the, oh, the, no. the idea is that somehow I'm like, how dare you fucking get some meat, Danny Netway? Like an orc, <laughs> like a fucking orc, right? Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that person. So let's not let's not give that caricature. Um, but my my issues are number one. Sometimes I will have legitimate questions. I think asking why vegans don't eat eggs is fair enough. And a friend of mine said that he does know some people who are vegans, but eat the eggs that their own chickens produce yeah. because they they know that these chickens are well looked after and, and all the rest of it. Yeah. And it's like, it, it's an egg. So I was like, because the logic to me 
of veganism makes sense as a as a concept if you're saying it's about the harmful um, treatment of animals, like the harming animals. Yeah. I completely understand that. that I think that's a, a genuinely noble stance. Fair enough. There's no actual moral argument that I can make that says actually torturing animals and eating them is a, is a good thing. I'm not going to try and make that argument. So I will just occasionally have questions, and one of them was about eggs. And everybody jumped to, well, people at these battery farms. Well, I'm saying, all right, so if we take the battery farms out of it, and these chickens live a luxurious life, you're still not eating the eggs. So and if the answer is no, eggs. then then just yeah. saying, well, it's a personal choice. I don't like eggs. That's, that's a they completely grow. different conversation. That's what I'm saying. Dude, sorry. I think we're all right. Uh, quick things, though. Let's go through before we run out of time. Um, Sips, The Apprentice was in Jersey. It was. In Jersey, please talk about this. It was. I watched the episode. It was. It was. It was good. It was. Well, I mean, it was. It was The Apprentice. They were all. Do you useless recognize at... local Jersey sites? Well, of course. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew every. I knew everywhere they were. I knew like even even just like when they're in the car in the countryside. I was like, oh yeah, I know where they are. Like uh, are you. <laughs> become familiar with the place that you live in like it's especially a small place right? yeah like it yeah, yeah. you're gonna know it was inside it, out was it like watching yourself on um on a task box or something you know, or on a like a youtube video like well, do you know what I mean? no not really but like it was i mean there was one point when they were well you've been here before lewis you know the central uh, market in town yeah yeah there's yeah. one point when they were in there and they were snooping around trying to find some stuff or whatever and uh, and Karen Brady had her notepad and her sunglasses on, and she you bet was, she did. She was looking around and making notes, and we and we thought that was kind of funny because, like, um, you know, to think that Karen Brady is like in the market that you go to nearly every day or whatever, like yeah, uh, in the place where you get that pizza, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, but um, yeah. I mean, that was about it. They they went Man. to like the you know the, the the really nice parts of the island for sure. Karen like Brady's the, so hot. She's such a just a strong and powerful woman. Whew. All about that. <laughs> Step uh, on me, mommy. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, stuff. no, it was it was good. It was interesting. <laughs> okay. It was, it was funny. That's a, that's the Lewis. Please don't <laughs> okay. talk about that anymore. Okay. Good stuff. stuff. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, so, man. do you want to hear the gaming news? I, want, I don't want gaming news. I want. Weirdo news. I want okay. gaming news. I want weirdo well, news. We we'll get... do one of each. We'll do one of each. So, so, I want gaming news. Weirdo, weirdo news. In America, Wendy's is start going to do surge pricing like Uber are does. Are you fucking right? serious? So when it's busy, the prices are going to go up. That How has no crazy. restaurant thought of this before? That's ingenious. Those so, yeah. devilish bastards. So burgers, frosties, and other menu items will cost more. Maybe that's what they're doing in Sweden. That's why they're all leaving at 7.30. <laughs> yeah, the surge yeah. starts at 8. Gotta get yeah. tuck in, guys. It's almost 8 o'clock. I think it's just because okay. it gets dark earlier that yeah. they've got used to eating early. But anyway. So uh, surge in, pricing at Wendy's, okay. In, in related food news, uh, the, the, the 29 vending machines at the University of Waterloo in Canada yeah. uh, are being removed after students discovered they each they all have little cameras in them that film whoever uses them what? and whoever's in front of them you know how like atms have yeah, yeah, in yeah. Them, right and they use it on crime shows all the yeah. time vending machines are now just sticking them in right. for what? As, as a standard practice yeah but standard um, practice for what well because uh, so to, to catch people who are trying to shake them shake out of those crisps loose you know well, do they have the, a little alarm in them shake the polo mints out i don't know People still get crushed by vending machines. Maybe it's for safety reasons. But no, it just <laughs> really? seems like it's... Get their arms seems like stuck in there, um, yeah. Wow. Everywhere's got... Cameras these days, they're so cheap. and it, I would imagine they were in everything. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. If I didn't know better. I don't care if a vending machine watches me buy a, a, a Twix unless... A, of course, it reports me to the vegan police. I just assume there's cameras everywhere, and that's why I make a point to just jerk off everywhere I go. <laughs> I see. As Great much stuff. as possible. So I... the students were, like, appalled that there was a camera in the vending yeah, machine? Yeah, students, like, got mad about why? it. Why? Because they're naive and they don't realize that cameras are everywhere. But and they're, they're, everywhere. On, they're probably They're probably on 15 cameras already yeah. while they're using the vending machine. Yeah. That is odd. Um, that's why. Because, you know, because it's a news, because it's news, isn't it? Right. Kids in Norway, mm. uh, have, uh, studies have shown that kids are, younger kids are being bullied over their lack of cosmetic skins and in-game items in FIFA, Fortnite, and Warzone. Jeez. Right? So again, no, this is not news. 
Uh, kids have always been bullied for having less. I don't have uh, to yes. worry because I've got, uh, I bought the Wu-Tang pack for Fortnite <laughs> and uh, I've got a uh, season one skibbity toilet uh, skin oh my for, God. for my guy as well. So I'm good. God. Oh, your, digi- your digital shit is not as good as my digital trainers. That's right. Yeah. Yes. It's, um, it's, I'm sorry, but that is, that is just kids are shits to each other. Yeah. yeah. Part, part a thousand. Yeah. That's ridiculous. They did uh there's a thing in Fortnite. Um, my son plays it uh, every day with his friends from school. They they go on and play like when they get home from school. And uh, I was I every once in a while I just uh, like you know peer over his shoulder and say oh you know take cover or you know I'm giving him advice. He's probably way better than me. But um, he's on the shop and he was talking to his friends and uh, they got a Lady Gaga skin uh-huh. on there. Which I, a bit weird because I feel like she's yeah. not very um, no she's not super relevant that, anymore, right? Or maybe not she for is. The, the kids that play Fortnite, I don't get yeah. it. That's bizarre. But anyway, she's got like a skin, and there's like some music clip when she uh, with an emote and stuff. And I just figured, nah, nobody's probably gonna buy that, right? Um, mm. And he joins the game in the lobby. Like every fucking person has it. <laughs> like there's all Lady Gaga skins, and they're all doing the emote music and stuff. So. <laughs> What the fuck wow. do I know? How strange. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, th- th- I've got an... Okay, apparently there's a company called GameScent, and this sort of happens every few years that something comes around, but there's the idea of this, this device by a tech company that you put a little box on your desk or whatever, and it connects to what you're doing in a video game and will release scents alongside your gameplay. Oh. So it has currently, it's got the smells of. Do you want to hear the smells? Can you guess what the smells uh, are? Farts, blood. for sure. How many farts are there in a video game, Sips? Well, you're playing blood. the wrong games. Blood, what does blood, blood smell like? Kind of irony. My, my favorite game, Perfect Lover, has a lot of farting in it, okay? No, there's no farts. Uh. The, the ones are gunfire. Uh, the smell, the of, smell gun of gunfire. I the would be alarmed of... to smell that in my gaming <laughs> garage. I would well, think that there was actually a fire breaking The out. smell of explosions. Well, that's not very Which clever. sounds like it would be very similar to the smell of gunfire. Yeah. Uh, the smell of racing. I guess imagine that's like burned tires. Um, imagine uh, imagine the thing malfunctioned and you're playing like uh, Baldur's Gate 3 and you meet like your dream honey for the very first time and it emits <laughs> the smell of shit and just ruins the whole thing for you. This smells like manure. What the fuck is going on with my scent box? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the other two are storm and forest. Ooh. What does that mean? Storm is like, uh, it smells like wet leaves and stuff, I guess. Maybe forest does too. Forest probably just smells like pine, you know, like those pine scented car scent. I mean, I'm not being funny, but Sips should get the the smell of soap for all those power washing. Yes. You know, the smell of detergent and uh, freshly wet concrete. Yes, that Mm. would be very nice. And the smell of old recycling. I actually have a diffuser in my garage and I have some uh, soap in it. I have uh, the smell of cedar in here Ah. all the time and it's glorious, very relaxing. So, this immersive thing, the way it works is it uses AI to hear what's like capture the audio. So, it's not connected into the game anyway. It's just like, the audio that the game produces, if it tr- if it hears like that that stock bear sound, then it just must like make a bear fart or whatever <laughs> smell. I would love um, it if it could uh, detect you know, using AI. It could detect what I'm doing, like yeah. farting or burping, and then when I'm playing Tarkov or whatever with a squad. If I burp, they could smell the <laughs> cola. <laughs> they, like it would, it would. Their scent smell, box would go up, and it would just be like kind of like juice. bad breath, and yeah, like vinegar and cola mixed <laughs> oh together. Oh my god, <laughs> that would be great. It's such a good idea. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Just you like do a little to your fart, friends. just a really eggy one. <laughs> I think it would improve, you know, uh, morale across the. A school. must have. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. who let one rip? You're trying to hold dorms. Fucking hell, it stinks. I gotta get out of here. Oh my god. Yeah. It's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Um so yeah, I like uh I like the idea of that. Well I don't. No, no one's gonna buy I hate it. That. Didn't they do it's something shit. like this for uh, the idea. South Park game? The but, uh, yes, but they promoted it. butthole. Yes. Yeah. They uh, yes, they did. No, what else I had have to you wear got? it. What else have you got? Awful. 
Uh, the Florida Man Games okay. has happened. Is it right as up. in like an Olympics, but for Florida Man? They rose up by the dozens from across, across Florida, caricatured competitors in tank tops and cut-off shorts for a showdown that treats evading police and wrestling over beer like Olympic sports. Nice. Uh, the most insane athletic showdown on earth. It pokes fun at the state's reputation for brawling, drinking, gunfire, reptile wrangling, and other antics that involve jail, time, or intensive mm. care. Jesus. Um, so yes, it's it's uh, it's. I don't I don't even know. Okay, so J okay, <laughs> James Gorzon of D Land won the first event, which involved wolfing down a plate loaded with barbecue pork and sausage. Jesus. Okay, okay. that sounds. He disgusting. chugged a beer to celebrate. I've lived in Florida my whole life, Gordon <laughs> said, after washing sauce from his hands. Nice. Uh, they're calling these events. I'm calling this fucking Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, so, uh, one event had contenders dueling in muddy water in an inflatable pool. Jesus. Uh, pummeling each other with weapons made from pool noodles and duct tape. Another was a theft relay in which competitors raced while carrying a pair of bicycles, copper pipes, and catalytic converters. Heavens. Good um, God. Yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, Donnelly42 says, I, Larry Donnelly, I have an absolute disregard for self-preservation. I will do anything. When I was in the military, I did a little alligator wrestling. Of <laughs> uh, course. Says. I have no regard for my life, essentially. That's yeah. insane. Those are the people who say, Hurricane, I ain't moving. And it's just like yep. the hurricane comes in and raises them well, to the Well, if ground. that's the case, you can take my pinched nerve then, my friend, and I'll, <laughs> I'll carry on enjoying my, my life if you don't value yours. Amazing. All right, listen, I got to go to the doctor, so... Uh, yeah, okay, my man's got to go. Thank you, everyone. Good uh, luck, we'll see you boy. All thank you. Yeah, wish me luck, and uh, I'll let you know next time uh, how it goes. And um, enjoy yourselves out there, everybody. Yeah. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.